What I'd like to do in the first segment of today's support group is look at some of the questions that are often asked of me, some questions that were posed to me by the team of Spirit Sunday, and most of you have the DVD that I've uh, created, the edited 10-minute version, and for those of you who don't have it, you can go to my Facebook page, www.facebook dot com forward slash the blissful living teachings or you can go to my website www dot blissful hyphen living dot org or you can go to youtube and just type ashraf murad a s h r a f space m w r a d and as you do that two of my videos come up there so this would be an accompaniment to that particular dvd this recording that i'm doing now and so the first question was asked in simple terms, please explain psycho-spiritual empowerment. The answer that I gave on the presentation was, the TV interview was really making us aware that we as human beings usually identify ourselves by our physical beingness. So our physical bodies, we usually get identified with them and then we get confused because we think I am this body. So I'm a physical being. And in this teaching, your physicality is not your identity. It is an expression through which you express yourself. So it's a physical expression through which you, who is a psycho-spiritual being, gets to experience yourself in the physical universe. Without your physical body, you don't have expression in the physical world. So your physical body is not what you are, it's not who you are. What you really are is a psycho-spiritual being, meaning you're a psychological and spiritual being. You are a person. That's what you are, you are a person. And so when you look at me, you don't see me, you see my physical body. Me and my physical body are two different things. Most, pe most people think that they are their bodies. You're not your body. And most people think, well, then you must be in your body. Well, technically, your body is in you if you want to be technical. But who or what is sitting on the chair is your body, it's not you. You don't sit on a chair, you don't need to sit. Your body needs to rest, your body needs to eat, your body needs to be, you know, washed and clothed and all that sort of thing. But you don't need to be. So very often we identify ourselves with the physical body. And all that comes with it. My name, my nationality, my race, my religion, and all the things that the body appears to be and all the things that the body does. I'm a vegetarian, I made this, I made that. Usually describing habits, usually describing preferences, usually describing what you do, etc. So what we really are is a psycho-spiritual being. So you're a person, if you want to call it that. And that quality of personhood is an essence. Now that essence that you are, you feel. I cannot tell you, but you know, you feel yourself. And sometimes you feel yourself feeling poorly, sometimes you see, feel yourself feeling wonderful. That is your psycho-spiritual beingness. When we feel fearful, we feel separate, we feel alone, and as we feel separate and alone, then you feel disempowered, psycho-spiritually disempowered. When you are psycho-spiritually disempowered, you become very dependent, you become very needy, you become very fearful, you're very threatened. So a person who is disempowered is a needy person, is a person who's insecure, is a person who's threatened. Now this is not a judgment, it is a description. Is a person who feels alone, separate, horrible. So when you are psycho-spiritually disempowered, it's an essence of separation. Me and the world are separate, and me dependent on the world, or dependent on somebody, or needing something. So that's the characteristic hallmark of a disempowered person. They are in a state of lack, and they are in a state of need. They are in a state of desperation affected by the world, trying to force the world to be a certain way so that they would feel better. 
believing that the way they feel is a function of their world being a certain way and then trying to change that world in some way. Believing that if I just change this, this one thing, my health, I'd feel so much better. If I change this one thing, my spouse, I'd feel so much better. If somebody would only listen to me, do what I want them to do, give me what I want, I'd feel so much better. This is called powerlessness. When you are powerless, you become forceful, directly or indirectly. Either you'll act out your forcefulness, threaten others, use a gun, use a stick, emotional stick, psychological stick, religious stick, some kind of threatening mechanism to control another person. It can range from, you know, I'm your mother and after all these things I've done for you, this is how you treat me you know, that kind of threat and manipulation. Two, I know what God wants for you and you don't know and I will now beat you up or have you murdered because you don't know. I am the purveyor of truth. It can be anything in between as well. But these are all marks of disempowerment, psycho-spiritual disempowerment. When a person is psycho-spiritually empowered, it is characterized by a feeling sense of feeling one, feeling at ease. Disempowerment is stress, strain, sacrifice, struggle, all that that goes with it. Empowerment is ease, is joy, is a state of oneness, is a state where you don't need anything from the outside world. You're quite okay while the world is as it is. As it is, you allow it to be that way. You are in a state of unaffectedness. Yes, you may respond. From Psycho-spiritual empowerment, you respond to situations, enriching, supporting the fulfillment of yourself. You make choices, decisions, and you apply yourself, but not from reaction. When people are disempowered, they come from a state of reaction. I'm affected by this, I can't stand it the way it is, I'm going to scream, shout, forcefully control somebody, or manipulate somebody, please don't hurt me. Please feel sorry for me. Please feel guilty and change my life in some way. So when you are disempowered, you become very forceful. Directly or indirectly, overtly threatening somebody, screaming, shouting, intimidating, interrogating. Or you can become manipulative. Poor me, I am such a victim. You know, feel sorry for me. Feel guilty. Very often you have beggars, and beggars are the epitome of powerlessness because they are needy, they are dependent, and they come from lack. So beggars usually will hang about places where wealthy people go, like fast food outlets, etc., etc., so that the people who are buying from the fast food outlets feel so guilty and sorry and pity, etc., and they use guilt, the other person's guilt, to get what they want. So not only do you have financial beggars, but you have emotional beggars too. Emotional beggars beg for love from another person. They need love because they lack love and they don't feel good believing that if somebody else only gave them some love, oh how wonderful they would feel. That is an emotional beggar, just like a financial beggar. A money beggar is somebody, no matter how much money you give them, it's never enough. They will always need more money. A love beggar, no matter how much love and attention you give them, they will always need more. It's never enough. Dependency is the hallmark of powerlessness, which is the hallmark of psycho-spiritual disempowerment. When a person is empowered, they are not affected by the world. They actually influence the world. They have the ability to influence. Look, everybody has the ability to influence, even people who are dependent. However, they're not accessing that ability. Every human being has the ability to experience creative energy flow, resourcefulness, the state of peace, security that is within them. Every human being has that ability. However, not everybody accesses that ability. That is the problem. Not accessing the oneness, not accessing security, not accessing that level of power that is within us, that level of beingness that is non-dual, that takes you into a state of oneness where power lies. In fact, whenever you use your mind in the dualistic sense, you are disempowered. 
It's only you have to go get out of your mind, go beyond your mind, and go into non-duality. It's a state of being where power resides in between your thoughts, so to speak. In a state of beingness, in a state of love and joy. In a state of love and joy, there is oneness and there is no thought. Thought cannot take you into the state of joy, just as action cannot take you into the state of joy. So you can't think your way to joy, and you can't do your way to joy, but you can be your way into joy. You can let go of mind, you can let go of stories, you can let go of fear, you can let go of stress, you can let go of all the things that create the apparency of separation. Remember, there is only oneness. There is only oneness. There is only that one which we are part of, that is within us, and that we are part of it. That's all there is, the oneness. There is nothing outside. In the interview I said, you are in God, and God is in you, and there is no outside. You are not only created by God, but you are created from God. All there is, is God. There is nothing but God. So, the whole experience of separation and insecurity and fear is a function of misperceptions. Thinking is a function of fearful thoughts. I am separate. I am vulnerable. Something can happen to me. I must keep myself safe. Psycho-spiritual empowerment is about true security. It is going beyond fear, letting go of fear. In the world of insecurity there is fear and then you must keep yourself safe from this fear. I must keep myself safe from fear is what keeps you locked in the prison of disempowerment. And there are many people who appear to be empowered because they have a lot of money, they seem to have a lot of luxury, they seem to have a lot of status. But don't be fooled. Having all these things don't necessarily mean you are empowered. It just means in the world of illusion, there are those who benefit at other people's expense and those who sacrifice for the, themselves for others. So in the world of illusion, they can be those who profit at other people's expense. They could be the people who make other people work very hard, in a sense, only by their permission, and draw to them people who are prepared to sacrifice themselves. So true prosperity is a function of independence and interdependency, where people come together and there is mutual benefit for both people. Both people benefit and enjoy and prosper in their interaction. That's true prosperity. But sometimes people come together in the one up, one down position. One up, one down. Meaning one person will say, I'm better than you. And the other person will say, yes you are, I'm worse than you. And they come together in a partnership. One person benefits at the other person's expense. The person seems, well, I've got the man in my life, I've got the woman in my life, I've got the money in my life, but at somebody else's expense. Somebody is paying the piper. You didn't flow it into your life, you are manipulating it into your life, you are forcing it into your life. So do not be fooled by the apparency of security. Many people have...